Welcome to News Republic. Today we are having a guest, Catherine Rubos. Since five years, she is practicing Buddhism and greatly involved in social work. At very young age, in this modern world, she became a Buddhist nun. Today, she is with us here. Catherine, welcome to News Republic. Yes, sir, tell us about yourself in details, how you convert into Buddhism and how you tackle the cultural and social Mm. I first started practicing meditation rather than practicing Buddhism. So I really came to the practice just for itself um, because I was struggling with, uh, with various things as a result of, of being involved with social justice issues. And I found that in sort of a hospital or maybe a more clinical context, they wanted to just fix me. And, um, and I actually just wanted to learn how to, how to keep my heart open in the face of suffering. I wanted to learn how to, how to live with it rather than make it go away. Um, so someone suggested that maybe a meditation practice or Buddhism would be a good, uh, good place to explore. It was. So, um, what do you think, how Buddhism can affect uh, uh, social issues, inequalities, inequalities in society? One of the things I love about Buddhist teaching is that it really is the fundamental human dignity of every person. Um, and there's a story where um, the, a Buddha's, the Buddha's like very rich upper caste, upper crust cousin wants to come and convert, but a butcher, which is the, the, a really difficult or lower position in society at that time, came to the gate first um, before this really rich brother, and the Buddha actually ordained that butcher before um, this very notable uh, and relative of his who had a ton of money and, and repute. And there are a number of stories like this where, um, where it's really clear that uh, the, the ethic of the religion is based on the fundamental human dignity of every person. And I think the more that each person learns to understand and see that, the less we're able to cause harm to one another. Um, it also is a practice that helps me be more content and more satisfied with whatever I have. And so I'm less, uh, I'm less likely to go running after having more things and much more likely to be concerned that everyone has enough um, because I'm not trying to accumulate a lot of things for my happiness. My happiness is coming from other places. So with one or two people, it makes a difference, but if many people are, are practicing even just the basic meditation and ethical um, basis of Buddhism without becoming Buddhist, even if they're just working on the, the basic principles of it um, for their own well-being, I think it has a broader spread. So uh, in your sense, how could Buddhism bring changes in the human condition? I think part of it's similar in terms of the equality piece. In terms of my personal practice, I found that uh, the more meditation and increasing mindfulness and awareness, you see maybe more of the good, but you also see um, maybe what you try to ignore about yourself, the things you wish weren't there. Um, maybe you feel angry about something, but you think it's, you shouldn't feel angry about it, and so you just ignore it and you say you're fine. Um, but the more you practice, the less you can ignore these things. And the more skills you have to deal with what arises in a skillful way. And so, at least for me, as a woman, even in the West, there's a fair amount of training around being really nice and kind, um, you know, not, not being as assertive, not being angry, you know, there's a lot of cultural conditioning that happens. And I think uh, 
that practicing meditation has made me both more aware of the cultural conditioning that I've taken on, and also more aware of, um, also more aware of, what do I want to say? Also more aware of how I really feel about situations, and then to have more skills to be able to articulate how I feel, how I see the situation, and what I would like to have happen um, in a way that isn't sort of really angry. It's just saying clearly, here's how I see it, and here's what I think needs to happen. Um, so it really is a refuge for me. It makes me feel much, both much more honest with myself about what's uh, about what's real and how how I feel about things, um, and and also much safer in terms of expressing what I what I think is right, um, or, or what I think is, is just in a situation. So, you're uh, practicing Buddhism since like last five years. Mm -hmm. so how you landed up uh, here in India? What you made to be here? <laughs> Let's see. Because I've been, so I've been practicing, like you said, for about five years, and I didn't, I hit a point in practice where I felt like it was really important to understand the cultural context of where this practice came from. Um, so if we're only studying in America, there are incredible wise teachers who have practiced very deeply and I, I trust the integrity of their teaching very much. And at the same time, there's a cultural context for Buddhism, a lineage of that. Um, that is hard to experience in the United States. So I decided to, um, I actually uh, left my job and left most of my belongings and, um, and, and headed off to Thailand and to Burma first because my Theravada lineage has the deepest roots in that area uh, and spent some time learning and just experiencing how Buddhism is there. Uh, and then India obviously is um, sort of the heartland for Buddha's birth and enlightenment, uh, and it's important to understand that in context also. Um, and then why am I here in Pune with all of you? Uh, it's because I'm really concerned with how do we bring Buddhism into social work, how do we bring it to issues of poverty or inequality, trauma, uh, and there aren't that many places that are working explicitly in that realm, and I know that Manuski is definitely doing that, so I wanted to learn from all of you also. Well. So what you observe and learned from here in this short period of time? I've only been here a short time, and, um, but part of what I really appreciate is that everyone seems to be doing their work with a lot of thoughtfulness and a lot of care. Um, the, at least the places where I have done social work in the United States are generally extremely noisy and chaotic uh, and we're sort of rushing around all the time. Um, and I'm sure that there are moments like that here also. Uh, but I think about what it would mean to be able to do social work in a setting that's less conducive to anxiety and stress and, and uh, in which you really feel the teamwork of everyone working together. So I also feel the Sangha um, aspect here very clearly, um, that people are really supporting each other uh, and working together. So. so do you think any changes, observe any changes here as far as California? Oh, what can I bring back? <laughs> uh, I think I'll need to. I'm, I'm going to see a few more things today, so I'm hoping that I'll also learn from that. Um, but I think really what I see is is that the, the social workers here, the, the staff who are doing social work in particular, um, you know, they say Buddha was the first social worker. Mm -hmm. And you can feel from, um, just from how they are, that they feel well. And I think a lot of social workers in the United States. Uh, we talk a lot about, um, about burnout, um, or people who are, feel over, overly compassionate and then can't sustain, um, can't sustain that level of caring. Um, but I think with Buddhism, compassion is not something that you can burn out of. 
it's actually an inexhaustible resource. And so how do we, I'm curious, how we can support people in learning how to cultivate a, a, a truer compassion um, and an equanimity that allows them to sustain their efforts for a longer period of time and really then develop skills and become more skillful uh, in their work. And he seems to have staff who have stayed five or six or eight or twelve years, uh, and this is something that's really rare uh, in the United States in that field, and I would like to see more of it. Um, the other thing that I think is really important is um, here there's a lot of awareness around what the construct of caste does and the harm that it can cause people in terms of their ideas about who another person is, right, based on their caste and how that, um, how that can create so much violence and, and not see other people as human. And I think we can really bring uh, that to the United States also, uh, what, what prejudice is, is appearing, you know, as someone walks in the door. Um, what about your background is causing you to see a person or their decisions in a certain light? And how do you allow those to fall away so you can really see what's actually there, the human being that's actually in front of you? So my last question is, what are your next, uh, next plan to spread the this thought in the world? Let's see. Well, I, I recently finished uh, the teacher training practicum for mindfulness-based stress reduction, which is one way that that Buddhism is expressing itself in the United States less as a religion and more as bringing the tools, uh, the tools available in Buddhist practice to the United States. So I recently trained in that and I hope to start being able to teach classes um, soon after I return. And the other piece is that I'll be going to get a master's in social work. So I'm very interested in how can we bring these mindfulness skills into both the social work field and also into my personal uh, practice and relationship with my colleagues and also um, anyone I have the privilege of working with. So. so thank you. We are really pleased to have you here. Yeah, I'm so grateful for all the time and support and conversations that you've been willing to have with me. I've learned a lot. Thank you.